Uh, so, dear friends, hello. Nice to see you here. And uh, I'm very grateful to you for your interest in uh, our native breeds. It is a special cycle of the lectures organized by the Russian Kennel Club, the Russian Kinological Federation, uh, in the framework of the special program named Responsible Breeding. So we continue this cycle and today the topic of my lecture is Russian Black Terrier. Uh, but before to uh, to read the standard, uh, standard and give my comments, I would like to add you something right now. Uh, for the deeper and better explanations of the provisions of the standard, I will use the model approach, which includes two models, biomechanical model of the dogs and harmonic model of the dogs. These models give me the possibility to consider the conformation of the dog from two different perspectives, uh, named soundness and harmony. These two models were used for my doctoral dissertation, so you can trust everything what I will be saying about that, because the principles included in these models are not hypothesis, they are scientifically proven facts. And uh, I will use them. So, in the beginning, I'm going to tell you briefly about the biomechanical model of the dogs, which is valid for the majority of the breeds, and uh, the Black Russian Terrier is belonging to this majority. So, Катюш, я вас попрошу картинки. Uh, just a moment, just a moment. Uh, look at the picture uh, at, uh, at your screen. You will see here the beautiful Russian Black Terrier Beach, which was my best on show at the World Dog Show held in Moscow in 2016. And here before, uh, he was a European champion at the uh, European dog show in Oslo. She won the group there under the same world famous judge. You can see him here, close to this winning couple. And uh, please take this picture in your mind because in a very short time I will show you how did like the dogs in the beginning. And now I'm ready to go to the biomechanical model. Which pictures do you like to have? This, this, is the, this is the picture how does look the black Russian terrier from outside. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next picture, mm -hmm. give us, uh, this is the uh, Russian black terrier on the move. And uh, now we can see the internal structure of this dog. Now uh, I will uh, go step by step telling you what is uh, uh, the composition you see in front of you. So the first postulate of the biomechanical model and the biomechanical model is the integrity of several postulates. And if you remember, the postulates is the statement which doesn't need to be proven. So, first postulate, please. Which one? Which picture? Uh, this one. Oh. Thank you so much. Uh, no, no, no. It was okay. Yep. Hello, Fabrizio. Nice uh, uh, hello to everybody one more time, please. But I continue uh, my uh, set out. So, 
as you can see at this picture, the top line from the beginning of the Vedas to the tail set is divided by anatomical divisions back, actual back, loin and sacrum is divided according to the ratio 2, 1, 1. When two units fall on the back, one falls on the loin, and last one falls on the sacrum. Postulates 2, 1, 1 is very special postulate. It is placed number one here, not only because of the order, but because of its value, <coughs> because it's the general index. And using this postulate when breeding, we can get compact body, strong top line, deep chest, and in the first approximations, correct angulations front and rear, and balance between them. Let me call these uh, blue lines um, as the sides of the pendulum. Of course, this name is a conditional name, but it will be convenient to me to use this name. These sides of the pendulum uh, are creating by two blue lines. One of them, the left one, a bleak left one blue line, is along the medium line of the shoulder blade. Another one, blue line, right one, is crossing hips, and the iliac tuber. And at the point of intersection, the angle is 90 degrees. So the second postulate is that the angle by the axis of the pendulum is 90 degrees. What does it give when breeding? This angle is providing the preconditions for the balance when dog is moving. Namely, is uh, providing the preconditions for the equality of the strides, front strides and hind strides. And the last one, I'm going to tell you, because there are several explanations, but I will uh, tell you only about two. It would be enough for our uh, further yeah. consideration. That the slant of the shoulder blade and slant of the iliac bone, these slants are not independent. And the dependence is 90 degrees by the axis of the pendulum. So these lines are perpendicular. Okay. The more detailed explanation I will give you uh, when reading the standard. Now we can go on. Next picture, please. It's more or less the same. It's more or less the same. Yes. Yes. And the third postulate is the principle named two horizontals. According to this principle, the shoulder joint or humeral scapula and hip joint lie on one horizontal line. And the elbow joint and uh, knee joint lie on another horizontal line. Uh, may I draw attention, please? Look, I am connecting elbow joint, not elbow ulna, because the joint is working. 
Uh, what does it give? These two lines oscillating contrary in antiphases and their mutual oscillations compensate each other. That's why the spinal column is remaining horizontal. Spine remains level. It looks not really um, horizontal, but a little bit sloping, but uh, there it is resulted by the length of the um, spinous processes, which are decreasing uh, from the withers to the tail set. And inside is practically horizontal or level spine. And why is it important? Because uh, if you remember, the motor thrusts from the rear are transmitting by the system of livers to the iliac tuber to be transmitted uh, further to the front of the dog along the top line. And if the spine is horizontal, the dog doesn't need to lift the center of gravity. And it has a very positive effect because dog with this construction is not tiring on the move, trotting. The next principle, the next postulate is principle of two verticals. One, two. According to the first vertical, elbow joint is under the withers, under the top of withers. And the second vertical line uh, means that knee joint is under the tail set. What does it give? In this case, the upper thigh uh, uh, very sorry, the upper arm is slanted backwards as much as possible in physiological limits. And that's why the front angulations, so the shoulder angulation or humerus scapula, is approaching to 90 degrees angle as much as possible. The same situation appears in the hind legs, because in this case, upper thigh is slanted a little bit forward. That's why the angle between upper thigh and sciatic bone is also 90 degrees. And you remember, the 90 degrees angulations are the best for the most economical functioning of these joints. So, this is the value of this postulate. We can go on. And uh, <clears throat> the picture you see in front of you is the conclusion of the previous picture. Please take a look. The elbow joint is under the top of with us. The knee joint is under the tail set. And you can see that the length of the top line is almost equal to the distance between these two joints. What does it mean almost? You remember the influence of the spinous vertebra due uh, to the height decreasing towards the, the rump, uh, the top line uh, is a little bit sloping and inside is practically horizontal line, horizontal spine. So, length of the spine and length of this distance are equal and this is extremely important because 
The beginning of spine and end of spine are support, supported by two mobile supports. Elbow joint and stiff joint or knee joint. And the um, uh, Oh, 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 how should I say it in English, my goodness. Uh, so, when dog is uh, taking off and landing, the first violations are approaching to this level, to these joints. And at this level, this violation is softened and that's why the top line or spine is not so much violated because of this softened transmission so let's go on according to this postulate the length of the body and distance bet between front and high legs are equal. I have to mention that we measure length of the body from sternum, not from this joint, because otherwise part of the body located in front of the shoulder joint or humerus scapula will be lost. Uh, regarding the hind legs, I have to notice that the hind leg is placed behind the body to the vertical rear pastern. We call it zootechnical stance. So, if the dog is standing correctly, then length of the body and distance between front and rear legs are equal. Why? Short explanation. Let us uh, imagine for a while that uh, angulations uh, are missing, that the limbs are deprived of any angulations, that the limbs are like uh, legs of the chair, then length of the body and distance between these legs will be absolutely equal. But by the system of levers, the body of the dog moved forward regarding rear and front legs. And if we suppose that they moved on different distance for front legs and for hind legs, then it means that the front strides and the hind strides are not equal. But this is not true, otherwise, balance when dog is moving will be never approached. You can see in front of you something new. What is this? Before to tell you about the golden section, which is the tool I used for the harmony of the dog conformation, uh, let me uh, shortly repeat you important results which are uh, because of the biomechanical model. Now let me uh, say to you that this model is uh, important either for the judges or for the breeders. Why and how? Because for the judge there are reference points. Look, Two, one, one, and borders in between. 
<laughs> and it could be checked by hands to find whether there is a no. Then the judge uh, will have the objective picture evaluating these top line proportions. Another thing, another reference points are concerning the uh, highest uh, um, horizontal line because it is very easy to check if the humerus scapula and hips, hip joints lie on one horizontal line or no. And the same situation is concerning the uh, lowest um, horizontal line whether these joints belong to one horizontal line or no. And uh, using of these points will give the judge possibility to upgrade objectivity of his assessment. For the breeders, the same points could be very efficient when looking for the best stud of the bitches. So, very shortly, this is the positive effect of using of biomechanical model. Now we can uh, follow to the harmonic mode. Uh, as I promised you, uh, I am going. I was and I am going to consider the dog conformation viewed from two perspectives. One was the based on the biomechanical model and it led to the soundness of the dog. This one is directed to the harmony of the dog uh, conformation. Harmony, what does it mean, harmony? It is a very uh, deep uh, concept and unfortunately it is not a time which could be uh, in more details uh, set out to you. But very briefly, I have to say that the uh, harmony from the formal side is based on the golden section, because the golden section is the universal form building principle. This principle was well known uh, for the ancient Egypt, for the ancient Greece, for the Renaissance time, for the modern time, and uh, there is a lot of examples of its influence. You can find in my book. In English, this book name is Dog Conformation and its Evaluation. And it is available in UK in uh, our dogs. Uh, now, let me concentrate on this formal definition of this principle. And uh, this definition was given by Euclid, which lived three centuries uh, before Christ. The segment O1 is divided by point X, this is a small circle, if its biggest part, or one, this is one, to its, uh, the, uh, very sorry, the whole segment uh, length, whole segment length, one, to its biggest part, or X, this is the X, is the same as biggest part, it is X, to the smallest one. Uh, this proportion leads very easily to the square equation and its positive root, can believe me, or if you like, you can calculate it, is the square root from 5 minus 1 and all divided to 2. Uh, if we will calculate the 
approximations of this um, number. The third approximation will give us this number, this fraction. Then, if I will uh, look for more rough um, meaning, it will be this one. And the last, most uh, rough approximation will be 0.6 or 3 to 5. Please remember this number, it will be important further in our uh, comments um, in the application to the standard of the Russian uh, Black Terrier. Uh, this number named golden section, this one in the beginning, and this is approximation, uh, where uh, has had the name La Proporzia Divina, because it was the topic of the book of the Italian monk, Mathematic, mathematicians lived in 16th century. He wrote the book named La Proporzia Divina, Divine Proportion, Proportion given by God. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci illustrated this book and it was his idea to change the name to Golden Section. Sectio Aureo, and uh, namely this name became famous for this principle. Uh, four centuries before, another mathematician, Italian mathematician, Leonardo Fibonacci, lived in Pisa, uh, solving one problem, got the sequence, you can see it, it is uh, very easily built. 1, 1, 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, and on. If I modify this sequence, look, one, then I will divide each previous to the next one. One, second, two, third, three, fifth, five, eighth, then, and it is a miracle, the limit of this sequence will be the same number, golden section. So each number of Fibonacci sequence could be considered as the approximation of the golden section. And you can see this is the same number. And now I would like to draw your attention of, on the initial sequence. A look at the numbers I put in red. One, one, two. Do these numbers remind you anything? Of course, this is considered in the reverse way. Two, one, one. So, this is the numbers which are base of harmony. Without these numbers, sequence couldn't be built and golden section couldn't, couldn't be approached. So now you can understand why 2, 1, 1 is the ratio according to which the spinal column is divided by, by its divisions according to this ratio. Now you can understand why that principle is the most important and the most valuable. Because only in this case, two, one, one, we are tuning the 
harmony of the dog construction, of the dog uh, conformation, at the initial level, and then the golden section could be approached. If the spinal column is divided according to another ratio, then never ever the golden section will be approached. So the harmony is based on these two, in this, at these three numbers. So I would call this discovery as the moment of truth. So, if this principle uh, has the universal value for the harmony of everything inside us or outside us, then dog confirmation should match this principle. So, my task was to find out these proportions of the dog exterior, which are important for the harmony for its build. Now, I am ready to go to these proportions, uh, and uh, we will look depth of the chest, to the length of the top line is golden section. Let me clarify something. Uh, depth of the chest. Uh, you can see. It is the, the level of the joint. And it is the top of withers length of the top line starts from the first thoracic vertebra uh, and two tail set. So, depth of the chest to the length of the top line is the golden section. And uh, let me uh, repeat that everything I am telling now about is concerning majority of the breeds, not for all breeds. There are some exceptions, but Black Russian Terrier matches this majority, belongs to this, this majority. This is proportion uh, number two. <clears throat> <coughs> Length of the chest to the length of the body is golden section. And let me repeat, please, that I start measuring length of the body and same length of the chest from the sternum. Three to five length of the body to the length of the diameter is golden section or roughly three to five what does it mean diameter at the picture you can see the blue line connecting occiput and uh, paw of the hind leg placed behind the body to the vertical rear pasta but in reality, you will have the dog uh, where occiput and this point do not lie in one vertical plane, which should be parallel to the longitudinal axis of the body. So, and this line is the projection of the initial line to the vertical plane 
parallel to the axis, longitudinal axis of the body. And this is a roughly three to five. Length of the body and distance between front and high legs are equal. Uh, why did I include this picture in the harmonic model now? Uh, because it could be interpreted like one one. And uh, how it was constructed, I have already given you the explanations. So we can go on. Height at elbow to the sum of head and neck is golden section. Please uh, pay your attention. This is the elbow joint not elbow alna. And uh, the last uh, harmonic proportion is girth of the muzzle to the girth of the skull is golden section. Girth or circumference, if you like it more. Okay, this is the end of the model approach. I do not give you any comments to each of them, because as promised, it will be done very briefly. But in some details, it will be uh, considered uh, when reading the standard when needed. Okay, now, what we have now? Now we see the dog on the move. Please enjoy this picture. And uh, I will tell you nothing about this uh, dog on the move right now. I will come back to this picture when reading the standard in part of movement. And now, very interesting picture. Uh, this is the book of standards issued in 1970 by the Working Dogs Federation with all standards. And this is the standard of the Black Russian Terrier. It was its name that time. With, uh, and you can see the pictures. Катюша, можно еще раз самую первую картинку, с которой мы начали, где было название сегодняшней лекции? Look, it's this is the example of perfection. Can you imagine that this dog? if is offspring of the dogs illustrated the standard in 1970? Can you imagine how huge work was done on this way? We have really greatly talented breeders who could get the dog like this one. So, now let's come to the past. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I mean the picture, pictures of the dogs illustrated the standard of 1970, please. Okay. So, very primitive dog. Uh, slightly long-bodied, deep-chested, with not a long head, the soft top line, arched loin, rather low set tail, uh, quite okay is front angulation and straight behind. This is the male. It is uh, noticed here. 
and this is the female. I'm not sure that I have to describe this female. It is very visible, everything here. And uh, in both, both uh, examples, male and female, the, you cannot see um, furnishing, especially in case of female. I would like, I have this book with me, and I would like to read you the standard. Something was foreseen, predictable, I would say. Talented, talented uh, authors of this breed suggested what should happen in the future and how it should look like. But something was different and I believe that for you could be interesting how this dog was described in, in that time. Uh, I have a, of course, it is printed, published in Russian. Let me translate it. Black Terrier is the dog over medium size. Over, it is above medium size. Uh, broad bodied, strong, with massive bones and musculature. Uh, thick uh, skin, elastic, without wrinkles. Dog is um, mistrustful to the strangers, uh, endurable, uh, with uh, um, conditions, uh, um, excellent, um, is able to um, adapt to the different conditions uh, of the, the uh, varied regions of the country. Type strong and coarse, uh, format 100 to 105, that means that the length of the body exceeds the height, it with us no more than 5%, uh, height at with us no less than 65, for the beaches no less than 60. Temperament, uh, strong, balanced, calm, uh, with a uh, defensive reaction in active form, gender type, uh, well expressed, according to males are bigger, more masculine, more massive than females. Coat, rough, dense, uh, broken hair, very well, very well developed furnishing on the muzzle and uh, in well-known places of the body. I will not translate it, it's easy. Undercoat dense, well developed, black or mixture uh, between black and brown. Uh, chroma, black or black with the gray. Head, long, rather wide in the skull with a rounded skull, uh, rounded cheeks. Forehead flat, stop, visible but not abrupt, uh, parallel planes, muzzle massive, slightly um, snipey, a little bit uh, less, a little bit shorter than the skull, together with the furnishing uh, it creates a blunt and uh, square form. Lips thick and fleshy, upper lip uh, closely uh, is close to the upper jaw without flaws, 
teeth, large, white, uh, with a tight um, scissor bite. Uh, incisors of the under jaw on one line, uh, eyes, uh, medium size, oval shaped, obliquely set, dark. Ears, high set, hanging on the cartilage, not big, triangle, front edge uh, close to the cheeks. Neck, long, massive, dry, 40 to 45 degrees to the horizontal. With us, high, uh, excellent, uh, prominent, uh, above the top line. Back, straight, uh, wide, muscled. loin, short, wide, muscled, a little bit arched, group, wide, muscled, slightly sloping to the high set tail, uh, chest, broad, deep, somewhat uh, rounded ribs, underline at the same level as the elbows, or a bit lower. Belly, um, tucked up, tail, high set, thick, should be shortly cropped, should be left one third of the tail. Front legs, viewed from front, straight and parallel. Humerus scapula, about 110. Elbows directed backwards. Uh, forearms, straight, thick, with a short, upright pastels. Uh, hind legs, viewed from behind, straight and parallel. Uh, set a bit wider than the forelegs. Upper thighs muscled, well developed. Second thighs uh, long, uh, obliquely set. Uh, hocks dry with good angulations. Rare pastels massive, long, set almost upright. Feet large, arched, rounded. Movement. Easy, smooth, light. Typical is short trot and gallop. Uh, when moving, uh, legs should be parallel uh, with uh, some uh, convergence of the forelegs to the median line. Back and uh, loin uh, uh, flexible. Uh, disqualif disqualifying folds. All deviations from the scissors. Uh, Cryptohedism, uh, including monorheads. Um, pied uh, white feet, uh, and uh, tens, pied color, uh, gray color. So, very interesting description. In many things, it is um, quite similar to the modern description except something which can help us to understand what way the breed was developed regarding its confirmation. Uh, size. 
Size is the first point. Formal. The old Russian terrier was practically square bodied, and the modern is somewhat long bodied. Furnishing was described as desirable with a good developed furnishing, but in reality, it looked like we can see uh, on, at the screen. Uh, and of course, desirable things like angulations front and rear were described absolutely correctly, very similar to the modern description, but in the reality, the dogs were primitive with the uh, angulations far away from the desirable. One more time, I would like to express gratitude to the breeders of this breed, which were so talented that could modify that primitive dog to the dog close to perfection. At the moment, the quality in the average of the black Russian terriers is really very high and sometimes for the judges even which are the specialists of the breed it's not easy task to place them to choose the leaders many of them are pretending to be leaders okay now Now what? I think we are ready to go to the modern standard to read it and uh, to give the comments. The uh, modern version of the standard of the Russian Black Terrier uh, is uh, confirmed by the FCI in 2011. And uh, the picture illustrated the uh, paragon of the breed. You can see famous dog. I don't know if you have in front of you the standard, but when you find it, you can remember that the name of this dog was Chris. He was triple world champion, triple European champion. Uh, he was international champion, club champion, uh, multiplied champion, and he was a great producer. Even in his origin, he was practically a result of outcross. So his value as the stud dog was magnificent. And the beach illustrated um, our lecture today in the beginning is his great granddaughter. Brief historical summary. The Russian Black Terrier was created in Russia during the late 1940s and in the early 50s by selective interbreeding of breeds like the Rottweiler, Giant Schnauzer, Elder Terrier, and Newfoundland dog. The Giant Schnauzer is considered to be the main ancestor of the breed. The initial breeding was supervised by the military sinological school outside Moscow and the dogs were based in the kennels named Red Star. The aim of the creators of the breed was the development of the large, brave, strong and manageable working dog with a pronounced guarding instinct. A dog which could be useful for many services and adapts well to the rice climate conditions. The breed was recognized by the FCI in 1984. This is the official breed summary. I would like to add something to this story. Of course, dogs were used to create this breed at that time did like differently than today. 
And some of them, like in Newfoundland, was mainly not a purebred dog. It was mixed with a shepherd. I would like to say German shepherd, but it would be not 100% correctly, because um, the German shepherd at that time uh, transformed in the into the East European Shepherd. It's another story, and let me don't go deep in this story. So it was um, breed uh, uh, which we called in Russia Moskovsky Vodalas, mixture of the Newfoundland and this East European Shepherd. Maybe some of Newfies were pure dogs. It is not clear now. Rottweilers of that time were more short-bodied than today and smaller, uh, not uh, so tall. Uh, Erdel Terriers were almost similar. Of course, not so perfect in outlines, but it was the uh, time after the Second World War and the creators of this breed uh, could use only what they had. And uh, the last one, uh, Giant Schnauzer, was also a little bit primitive and not so tall. This is about the ancestors. And the dogs in the beginning were very angry dogs. It was difficult to uh, rule them and uh, um, it was a very hard job due to which the temperament and the outlines of the Russian terror were modified so much. In the beginning, the dog, this breed, was bred in the kennel Red Star only. And it was created for the military purposes. That's why his coat couldn't be with the specifics of today with a lot of feathering. It would be not convenient to use them for military purposes. Also, grooming of these dogs by soldiers couldn't be done the best, and you understand that the dog could be healthy all the time, uh, deprived of uh, any skin problems. So, uh, it's easy to understand what why it's coat looked like uh, the pictures illustrated the old standard. But with the um, years, um, some dogs uh, came to the hands of the um, lovers of the breed, which lived outside Red Star. And it was possible due to exchange between the working club, working clubs, and army. The army was interested in the shepherds, in the East European shepherds. And the breeders of these dogs let the dog grow up to the determined age, and this dog was sent, sent to uh, Red Star, and it, as the exchange, these breeders couldn't get black Russian terriers. It was the beginning of the um, breeding uh, at the platform of the amateurs 
with the years, because of the special selection, directed to more beautiful um, outlines and to better developed furnishing and to the most more soft temperament it was possible to get these dogs try to compare dogs illustrated the old standard were belonging to the 70th of previous century and uh, the Chris you remember he is put in the standard as the paragon of the breed uh, was born if you remember correctly I remember correctly in the beginning of the 90s so only 20 years needed to transform that primitive dog in this beautiful specimen of the breed. This was the way. General appearance. The Russian Black Terror is a large dog with a slightly long body and very athletic build of a robust type and hardy constitution. You can see immediately the difference. Previous standard, the dog was above medium size. Now it is a large dog. It's symmetrical, uh, it is symmetrical with a large head and compact body and uh, a voluminous and deep chest. Differences between the sexes to be clearly defined. Now it's the time to clarify something in the context of this uh, description of the general appearance. You can see, once again, the top line proportions. And uh, you can find here, easily find, that the long, uh, that the loin is short. It is a uh, one quarter of the top line. Short loin is the reason of compact built dog. If loin like here, like it should be in Black Russian Terror, is short, that means that the, this part, I would call it chest part, from the last part, which includes the rump and high legs, are close to each other. They are located not far away from each other because of the short connection. So the same could be called short coupled dog. First couple, and the second couple. And this is because of the shot. Besides that, we can find in the standard that the body is slightly elongated. That means that the length of the body is slightly superior than the height at widths. And these two, uh, these two things, these two statements, compact body and slightly long bodied body, are not in contradiction. Unfortunately, there is a widespread mistake when people think and sometimes are sure 
that the compactness is the same that the square bodied dog. This is not true. And uh, as the best explanation, please keep in mind, ex in mind the example of the dog's home, one of the most long bodied dog. Again. Again. Which, ah. which must be compact. And the explanation is the same only because of the short loin. Differences between the sexes to be clearly defined. Now it's a time uh, to say about one important feature. It is well known that usually the bitches are longer in the body than the dogs. Why? And when I asked people, what is the reason for the some elongation of the body by the bitches? The answer is because of the loin. And this is a widespread delusion. Because this ratio, 2, 1, 1, and the sex of the dog are absolutely not correlated. Either for males or for females, this spinal proportion, the spinal ratio is the same. 2, 1, 1. But if it doesn't influence the length of the female's body in the comparison to the male's. What is the reason for this elongation? Let us remember the functional difference between the sexes. Bitches should bring the puppies. So, whelping is the main reason for this difference. And for the whelping, sciatic bones should be longer and buttocks should be more prominent because this provides the best process of whelping. But what happens? Катюшка, я попрошу дать мне пропорцию из числа гармонических. Которые? Мы сейчас найдем. Там, где сравниваются между собой длина груди и длина туловища. Там, где зеленым, по-моему, зеленой дугой перечеркивается длина туловища. Дальше. Следующий, вот. Okay. Look, look at this. No, 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 no. Before. The previous one. Okay, yep. Look. Now, try to remember what I was saying. I elongated the sciatic bone so the buttock became more prominent. That means that the proportions between the chest part and length of the body are violated. Body became longer than before. In, that means that there is no more three to five. There is now three to five plus something and golden section is violated and how we could uh, restore the balance how could we restore the right ratio only one way if we will add some more prominent forces lengthening the chest in front then we will restore this proportion 
in the accordance to the golden section. That's why in the beaches, forechest is a bit more prominent as well as the buttocks. And these lies are becoming more soft, more smooth and soft, uh, which uh, is more typical for the females. And males have more hard outlines. And the females have more soft outlines, which is more feminine, like it should be. I believe that my explanation is exhaustive and everybody understands what, what I meant. So, coming back to the beginning of the standard, general appearance. So, not only. Uh, Katyusha, я попрошу теперь следующую, даже через одну картинку. Там, где сравнивается высота в локте, сумма един головы и шеи. Мне кажется, не через одну. Да? Вот эту, через две. А, давайте через две. Вот, спасибо. Uh, about the um, difference between the sexes. Height at elbow to the sum of head and neck creates golden section or is created by the golden section. Uh, by the males, head is longer and larger and more massive. By the females, head is a bit shorter, smaller and not so massive. At the same time, the bitch's neck is in the average longer than in the dogs. Thus, the sum is remaining the same. Smaller head plus longer neck and result is the same as before. And vice versa, for the dogs, larger head plus shorter neck and the result will be, will be the same. And this uh, ratio between height at elbow and uh, sum of head and neck will be not violated either by males or by females. So, let's go on. Important proportions. Uh, length of the body is slightly longer than the height at width. It could be more pronounced in females. This is already what was explained. So now you understand the sense of this statement of the standard. Depth of the chest should not be less than the half the height at width. Length of the uh, depth of the chest, uh, I read it. Length of the head should not be less than 40% of the dog's height at width. The muzzle is slightly shorter than the skull. I go a little bit ahead to the description of the legs. When it is mentioned that the distance from the elbow ulna to the ground is equal to 50 to 52 percent of the dog's height at with us. Look, it is really uh, clear because alna of elbow is located higher than the joint. And this height at elbow is really more than the height at elbow. 
and then Doc looks. Uh, no, it's better to explain uh, another one. But Doc looks a bit stocky. despite this 50 to 52 percent. 52 percent is a leggy dog and the black Russian doesn't look look as a leggy dog and you have to understand the sense, the reason. Because this height 50 to 52 percent is regarding the height at Elbow alna, not elbow joint. So, the Black Russian Terrier has the chest reaching the elbow joint or even a bit below. So, please be careful reading these two statements which are not in contradiction. I'm coming back to the beginning. Uh, Forty percent regarding the head is quite normal, proportional for the majority of the breeds, nothing special. Uh, muscles slightly shorter than the skull. Uh, regarding uh, important proportions, and uh, general appearance. I have to add something. Look, the ancestor of this breed were so different. Giant Schnauzer, Elder Terrier, Rottweiler, Newfie. And the type, true type of Black Russian Terrier, uh, is described as the rather stocky, massive dog with a big head. With a, um, it is a dog, uh, broad uh, body. I would say that the Russian Black Terrier could be considered as the huge schnauzer, if not giant schnauzer. I could give the name giant, but it is already used for another breed. And in this case, everything is uh, uh, with a bigger uh, dimensions, but the proportions are very similar to the schnauzer. Rather stocky than slim, stocky rather than slim. A slightly long bodied, schnauzer is almost square bodied, which uh, could be interpreted similarly, with a large head, of course not 50% of the height, because when size is increasing, it's very well known, the length of the head, sorry, is decreasing. It couldn't be 50% for the such huge dog, for the such extremely tall dog. But main thing, very deep chested dog, almost stocky, with a broad chest, with a massive construction and strong bones, reminds very much Schnauzer in the largest edition. That's why it's uh, quite understandable that among all his ancestors, the giant Schnauzer was named as the main one. In my opinion, this comparison is quite okay uh, to describe um, the type of the dog. 
which uh, shouldn't be, uh, uh, how should I say it in English, inclined towards the terror type when we could get, and it happens, flat ribbed dogs, high legged, uh, high, high legged dogs with a narrow heads in the skull, uh, with the angulation not so much expressed. And it should not be more loss. And we will uh, find one small accent in the description uh, put in the standard, which can help us to understand how it could be prevented from the tendency to the molos type. Uh, behavior and temperament. A dignified and confident dog. Well controlled in all situations. When circumstances require, he immediately assumes an active defensive posture. However, quickly calms down in the disappearance of threat. This handsome breed is amiable and has great endurance. It is undemanding, smart, and friendly. It adapts well to training and various climate conditions, and it is hardworking and reliable. Uh, these two uh, specifics, uh, when circumstances require, he immediately assumes at an active defensive posture. And, however, quickly calms down. Very typical for Schnauzer, if you remember. One more detail, which remains similarity of the breeds. Um, head. Head should be in proportion to body, although large, massive, and long. Skull, moderately broad with flat forehead. Top line of skull is parallel with the top line of muzzle. The superciliary arches and occipital bone are moderately pronounced. Stop noticeable, noticeable but not sharp. Uh, nose, large and black. Muzzle. Strong, broad, and slightly shorter than the skull. Muzzle is wide at the base and narrowing slightly to the tip of nose. Moustache and bird accentuate its volume and give the muzzle a rectangular, blunt appearance. <clears throat> Try to remember the old description, which was quite similar. The main features are the same. Remained. Lips thick, well pigmented and tight. Lip rims dark. Uh, jaws, teeth, large white teeth that are tightly adjacent to each other. The lower incisors positioned in one line. Full dentition, 42 teeth, scissors white, cheeks, dry cheekbones, with a rounded but not pronounced cheeks. Uh, so I would say that the uh, uh, head uh, has, uh, in general, viewed from front and from above, a rectangular shape, which is uh, not interfered with the uh, developed skulls. So, including developed skulls, accentuated by well-developed moustache and beard, it has a rectangular shape. Eyes, medium size, oval shaped, set straight and wide apart. Dark color, uh, wide apart, 
uh, matches the muzzle uh, uh, nose bridge uh, white at the at the root at the base dark color of eyes this uh, point it's um, a rather difficult point and uh, one of the most typical faults in the population is the eyes color quite often we can find rather light eyes and uh, this is the uh, requirement dark eyes which should be considered which should be kept in mind very carefully because eyes color as everything uh, uh, concerning uh, pigmentation um, is uh, correlated with the nervous system. It, it is not a time to give you the details of this explanation, but one more time, should you need it, my uh, book has this um, position, this point and this explanation. Uh, ears hanging set high and symmetrical medium sized triangular shaped front edge close to the cheek here leather is dense dense without folds neck strong dry and muscular the length of the neck is approximately equal to the length of the high, uh, uh, head and uh, set at an angle of 45, 50 degrees to the horizon. The nape is strong and well developed. Now, remembering the old standards and description of the neck, we have to say that the neck of the modern Black Russian Terrier is set a bit higher than before. Body, solid, deep and voluminous, well balanced. Solid body is the synonym of the compact body. Uh, usually when describing this term, uh, we uh, notice that the top line uh, is very smooth from the withers to the tail set without the possibility for the eye to find out borders between back, loin and sacrum. This line looks like one hole solid, solid body and uh, so-called solid top line uh, features should be considered together. Top line slightly sloping from the withers to the root of the tail. Why it is like that? Because of the spinous processes which height is decreasing from the withers to the sales tail set as I said to you before and plus there is one more phenomenon which is uh, which is giving uh, uh, how should I say it better which prevents to the uh, overbuilt dogs, either when standing or when moving. I will um, consider it uh, with more details coming to the uh, limbs construction. 
But now I would like only to, to point this position. It is a preventive measure against overbuilt construction with as high and well-developed, more pronounced in males than in the females. This is one specific feature typical for the different sexual types, males and females and difference regarding the withers, which are developed more in males. Back, strong, straight and muscular. The length of the actual back is equal to the one half of uh, um, to one half the length measured from the withers to the base of the tail. Uh, this is according to the golden section that the back is the half of the whole top line. The uh, term actual back is written quite special because there are uh, several different definitions of the back. We use for the back definition which is based on the thoracic part of the spine from the first vertebra to the last thoracic vertebra. This is the beginning of the chest, this is the end of the chest, this is the beginning of the back, this is the back, end of the chest. There are several, uh, and in this case, to accentuate this name we put the term actual back, actual back or thoracic part of the spine. There are several definitions as I already uh, said to you. Uh, one of them is when the uh, as the back, the whole top line is considered to be a back. Whole top line can be considered as the back. That's why very short we find out in the description, in the descriptions of our colleagues, a short backed dog, when they mean that they uh, consider the short top line. Another definition is based on another statement, when in the back are included actual back plus loin. And this is very, typic very typical for the German system, um, because this sum is considered and is called as the medium part of the body medium part. There is several other definitions. I, I don't want to tell you about all of them, but the only definition based on the back as the thoracic part of the spine does give you possibility to find out proportions between back and loin. And later on, iliac tuber will give the possibility to find out the proportion between these two parts of the top line of the spine. Any other definitions don't give you this possibility. Then attention of the judge or of the breeder is not directed to these proportions between back, loin and sacrum. And then it is impossible to find out 
the proportion which provides the harmony, the basic harmony of the dog, resulted by these numbers, 2, 1, 1. Initial Fibonacci numbers. Without these numbers, as I told you already, harmony couldn't be approached. So please keep in your mind the definition I gave you, and uh, it will help you uh, to make the best assessment of the dog. Uh, loin wide, short muscle, muscle, then slightly arch. The length is equal to half the length of the actual back. Uh, there is the description of this principle, two and one, and the rest is one. So it's as described with, a, with other words, the same ratio. I don't need to explain it uh, more. Everything, I hope it is clear. Croup, broad, muscular, slightly sloping, of moderate length. This is an interesting point. Let us take a look. Uh, sacrum is the upper part of the croup. But the croup includes also pelvis bones, plus muscles and tendons located in this area. Short upper part, sacrum, and quite rather long croup. Because of what? Because of long sciatic bones. Sciatic bones length gives the length of the group. That's why these two statements, short sacrum and long group, are not contradictive. Uh, chest, deep, long and broad with slightly sprung ribs. ribs. Slightly sprung ribs. You remember in the beginning, uh, broad-chested dog, and uh, together with the slightly sprung ribs, are these uh, requirements not contradictive? No. Moreover, if it, it is written that the ribs are sprung, it could be uh, interpreted as the tendency to the molos type. So, here is the warning, slightly um, arched, slightly sprung. At the same time, ribs are not flattened, and it will uh, save the dog from the tendency to the terrier type. Uh, shape of the thorax in the cross section is oval. The breastbone is long and the forechest slightly extends, slightly extends the shoulder joint and is well muscled. Like here is uh, painted. Deep chest, you can see breastbone is at the level of the elbow joint. Uh, underline and belly on the same line as the show joint or slightly below. Belly moderately tucked up. Flanks only slightly developed. Tail. Uh, sorry with, for this uh, cropped dog. I belong to the last century, when uh, this breed, as well as the many others, were docked. And for me, it's quite natural to, to see this picture. So, 
uh, I beg your pardon, but dog is cropped here. I like the requirement on the stand. Let us read it. Thick the root and set high. In the moment the tail is carried jaunt, uh, jauntly, but the root of the tail does not incline over the back. Squile tail should be should not be directed towards the head. A tail traditionally docked in the country of the origin. Russia is the country of the origin. Dock is docked. Oh, an undocked tail's length or shape has no influence on the evaluation of the dog. Preferable shape or of the undock tail is saber or sickle. Oh, we, uh, when uh, uh, writing the standard, we use the experience of our colleagues from Germany when they required for all schnauzers, for example, uh, saber or sickle tail. And in our opinion, it was not correct uh, because of several reasons. First of all, it was no any selection on the shape uh, of the chests before. All tails were docked. So nobody knows about the shape and carriage, not at the root, but further. Another thing, um, it was a mistake in the English translation from the German, because in German it was written, uh, I translate now into English, correct translation, that the saber and sickle uh, shaped tails are aim of selection. And uh, in the English translation published in the Eye Standard, for all schnauzers, is written that it is a soft, sought after. So, almost uh, required is a big difference. And uh, should pass some time and some specific direction, uh, selection directed to the uh, desirable shape of, of the tail before this shape will be approached. That's why in our standard of the Russian black standard is uh, terrier is written what I read for you right now. General appearance. Four legs when viewed from the front and straight are straight and parallel. The distance from the elbow alna to the ground is equal to 50 to 52 percent of the dog's height at with us. I already told about it. Shoulder. Shoulder, I mean, uh, in this context, we have to uh, understand that this is a shoulder blade. Long, broad, and well laid back. We used well laid back because of traditional description of this uh, uh, oblique positioned uh, shoulder blades. But we used it because it is quite traditional. Uh, the angle between shoulder uh, blade and the upper arm is approximately 100 degrees. 100 degrees. Upper arm muscular and no, no shorter than the shoulder blade. You can see. At one vertical. With the same slant. With the same contrary slant. Elbow close to the body. Forearm straight, thick, 
round bone. Uh, vertical when viewed from the front and side. Past and short, massive, and slightly sloping when viewed from the side. Four feet, large, compact, and round in shape. Nails and pads are black. Hindquarters. General appearance. When viewed from behind, straight and parallel. Uh, set wider than the forelegs. When viewed from the side, placed slightly behind the dog. Thigh, moderately long. Thigh means upper thigh. Um, slightly inclined, wide with well-developed voluminous muscles, a stifle, well-bent, lower thigh, no shorter than the sides, a rare pastor, strong, low and vertically positioned. No due close. Uh, low means low um, placed hock. Uh, hind feet, slightly smaller than the front feet and tending oval shape. Uh, nails and pads uh, are black. Now it is a time to come back Uh, to the models, particularly uh, for the biomechanical model. Uh, the angulations in front and in the rear should be in balance. What does it mean? Coming back the principle of two horizontals, we will find out that the humerus scapula joint and hip joint lie on one horizontal line. And the shoulder joint, not ulna, joint, and the knee joint lie on another horizontal line. What does it give? As I told you, when dog is moving, these two lines are oscillating in antiphase or contrary. And what happens? With some more detail, please. Uh, the hip is going up so much as the stifle is going down. So, this is uh, what I was saying, they compensate oscillation each other. And this compensation, and because of this compensation, the spine remains level. I explained already why is it important, and I don't think that it is necessary to repeat it. But should you have any questions after my lecture, you can ask me one more time. However, these two horizontals, even they block the overbuilt structure, cannot provide the optimum slant of these two elements to provide the best meaning of front angulations and the rear angulations. This angle should be quite close to the 90 degrees, 100. It is not a big difference. And uh, 
coxofemoral angulation should be exactly 90 degrees. Uh, I will give you some more details about the uh, coxofemoral angulation a bit later on. Катюш, я вас попрошу потом дать мне отдельно картинку с состроением таза, ну, хорошо? Да, да. Uh, and only this requirement, according to which shoulder joint and top of withers should lie on one vertical line, principle of two verticals, and knee joint, and tail of the sand, uh, uh, root of the tail should lie on one another vertical line. Are there reasons to put the elbows under the body and the front angulation uh, be developed more close to the 90 degrees. And the slant of the upper thigh, uh, regarding this construction, this coxofemoral angulation, uh, will lead to the 90 degrees in this case. So, two horizontals provide level spine and two verticals create the preconditions for the best angulations in front and in the rear. But, because of a uh, well, sometimes a little bit too much angulated rear limbs. We uh, mentioned this sl sloping position of the top line. Look, when hind legs are unbending, the ramp is getting higher and the high with us is additional reason to prevent the overbuilt construction. If the angulations of the rear will be less, this sloping top line would be not so necessary, not so required. And when they are so much angulated, when they are unbending, the ramp is going much more high. And the sloping top line is additional preventive measure uh, against overbuilt construction. Katyush, дайте мне теперь, пожалуйста. Нет, я хочу... Вот это, да. Спасибо. Кто-то что-то там нам пишет? Нет. 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 rules for the good harmony. Uh, so, it is not enough to have the feeling for the good harmony. It is uh, required to know the rules of harmony. There is an example, uh, very parallel, but uh, anyway, which could uh, clarify my position. A lot of people are talented, are gifted by music ears. How many of them are musicians? How many of them are professionals? Only those who studied theory of harmony. Here is the same. Without this knowledge, uh, even very talented people with their excellent eyes for the dogs 
are only dilettants. This is the uh, pelvis seen from the side. This is the iliac bone. This is the sciatic bone. This is the joint, hip. And please take a look at these lines, which means that these three points, iliac tuber, hip joint, and buttock, or sciatic tuber, do not lie on one straight line, but they create blunt angle. And the upper thigh of the hind leg placed behind the dog should create 90 degrees angle with a sciatic bone. Why? Because it is well known that the only 90 degrees angle gives the maximum for the economical function of this joint. The closer is this angle to the 90 degrees, the more efficient is the function of this joint. The less power it uh, takes uh, to provide the best uh, push, the best uh, motive thrust when unbending. Here are located extensors. Long sciatic bone gives a correct place for the best development and correct angle between upper thigh and sciatic bone provides the best function when uh, the dog, uh, when we consider this thigh unbending. Uh, vice versa, this is the upper thigh of the bending leg. And the angle between this upper thigh and iliac bone also should be 90 degrees because at this time unbending should be provided also uh, with a maximum of, of the efficiency and this angle should be also 90 degrees and this bone should be long to provide a lot of space for the flexors, bending muscles, unbending, unbending muscles or extensors, and bending muscles or flexors. Now we come back to the previous picture, please. Где были? Нет, нет, Катюш, где были конечности? Нет, вот предыдущие, где были конечности? А, двигаемся вперед. Я скажу, когда. Нет, это назад. А, вперед, сейчас. Нет, 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 нет. Так, ну хорошо, стоп. Давайте остановимся на бегущей собаке. Да, замечательно. So we can see now how it's uh, how it works. Uh, now it's clear why should I tell you about the postulates. Uh, belonging to the biomechanical model. Look, two horizontal lines. 
they provide uh, the condition according to which spine is remaining horizontal. And as you can see, sloping of the top line for the dog on the move is not so express as in case of the standing dog. And this is happening because of unbending of the rear angulation and the ramp coming a bit up, but not so much that the overbuilt construction would appear. I believe that now it is clear. About the movement and criteria we use for its description. Do you remember that the first uh, criterion of the balance, uh, I think I have it mentioned as the first, is the equality of the front and the rear strides. You can see, they are really equal. Then I told you that the blue lines, blue oblique lines uh, determine or provide the preconditions for this equality. And uh, beside that, they determine the borders of the swings dock on the move close to the ground swing or range, if you like this word better. The third thing is the vertical line uh, dropped from the eye to the paw of the front leg at the moment of landing or close to be landed. And uh, this vertical line on one hand, uh, could be uh, interpreted as the, as the criterion of the extension trot, well extended trot, and on the other hand, uh, could have another explanation. Why it is, re is it required? Vestibular apparatus, or acoustic center of equilibrium, is located in the ear. Quite close to the ear is located the eye. And the eye is in advance to this vestibular apparatus. That's why at the moment of landing, the equilibrium will be approached. It is another side of uh, this explanation. First, could be used, could be interpreted as the criterion of the well extended throat. Another way, another side is the explanation why is it required to be in advance of the location of the vestibular apparatus and provide equilibrium when dock is landed. And one more detail, also important for the description of the sound movement. The vertical lowered from the point of intersection from the uh, point of intersection, it would be enough. Uh, is very important because here, here, is located center of gravity. And the hind legs of the opposite side at the stage under the body 
are converging to the base of this vertical. And this is very important because the hind leg at this moment will provide support of the entire body. Let me see if we have something else. A uh, skin. Ah, no. Uh, typical gait. Uh, typical, the typical gains. No, 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 no. I will uh, read one more time about the gait movement. Free and well balanced with smoothly bent joints. The typical gait is energetic trot with the long strides which comes from the powerful rear drive and significant reach in the four quarters. To apply to remain firm. I gave the whole explanation to this. Skin. Tight, well fitted without folds or loose skin. Still elastic, evenly pigmented. Coat. Hair. Rough and thick double coat. Composed of a coarse, thick, slightly waved outer coat and soft, short and dense undercoat. The outer coat covers the whole body. The natural and the untrimmed coat length is between 5 to 15 centimeters. The head furnishing is very well developed and forms abundant eyebrows, moustache and beard. beard. Legs are covered in long, dense uh, furnishing coat. Grooming in the correct form is required. The clipped coat should emphasize the character of a strong and assured dog and by no means by excessively decorated. The coat is left longer on legs and around the muzzle. The clipping should, be, should accentuate the massive head with a flat forehead, well-lying ears, strong back, a strong neck and well-constructed strong body. Color, black. Black with insignificant intermingling gray hair is permissible. Gray intermingling hair not to cover more than one third of the whole body. Size and weight. Males, 72 to 76, but not more than 78. Try to remember the previous standard, the old one. The edition of 70, 65. Of course, description of the whole dog was above medium. And here, large dog. Females, 68 to 72. Uh, I forgot to tell you about the males, no less than 70. And for the females, no less than 66 but not no more than 74. Slightly taller specimens are tolerated providing they are proportionate and of excellent breed type. Weight, 50 to 60 kilograms, females, 45 to 50 kilograms. About the faults, skull rounded. Partial lack of pigmentation on lips. Incisors not in line in lower jaw. Small incisors. Eyes round, slightly light colored, oblique or narrow set. Neck too short and not muscular enough. Withers not pronounced. Sway back or narrow back. Loin too long, narrow, not muscled enough. Shoulders too straight. Forearms too short. Elbows turned in or turned out. Feet turning in or turning out. Hocks turned in, out or sickle. Sickle means overangulated when the rear pastent are inclined forward or slanted forward. Pacing interspersed when trotting. Guard coat soft or smooth, rustly shading in guard coat, no undercoat. About pacing. 
uh, it happens. But mostly it happens uh, for the dogs which are not comp compact or dogs with a long loin. If loin is long and plus maybe not wide enough, then the body is able to be tending to the roll gate, side roll gate. And side roll gate is the beginning of the pacing. Why I told you about the wide loin? Why it should be wide? Why it should be required? Because unlike horses, the transverse processes of the loin are rather short. And on the well-developed muscles uh, provide the wide loin. When loin is able to withstand wobbling of the croup. And wobbling, uh, as well as the side roll, uh, are preconditions for the pacing. Guard coat soft or smooth, rusty shading in guard coat, no undercoat. Severe, devi severe faults. <clears throat> Deviation from the sex type, timid or overexcited behavior, head short or light, visible third eyelid, light colored eyes, severe fault. Group horizontal or too steep, chest shallow or short, squile tail, bowed forearms, Moved, movement restricted, sluggish or heavy. Guard coat, uh, guard coat silky. Disqualifying <coughs> faults. Aggressive or overly shy. Any dog clearly showing physical or behavioral uh, abnormalities. Deviation towards the ancestry, ancestry breeds. Nose other than black. Wall eye or different colored eyes. Deviation from the scissor bite or missing teeth. Guard, coat smooth or lack of head, chest and leg furnishing. Any other color than the ones described. White spots on or markings. Clearly defined patches of the gray hair. And not a banner as usually concerning uh, testicles and uh, healthy health of the dogs. So, Katiusz, у нас есть еще картинки? Да, конечно. Рисованные. Давайте я вам прокручу их назад. Хорошо. Я... Скажите, что мы да. какую-то не разбирали, но не остановимся. Если нет, то придем. А, на минуточку, Давай. предыдущую, где морда и череп. Это мы говорили. Нет, 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 другой, следующий, где голубенькие окружности. Вот, вот и про это не да. говорили. Про это пропорция. Uh, explanation of these uh, golden proportions. Three to five. When I told you about the harmony, I didn't tell you and now it is the time, the true time, to tell you that the harmony is not only beauty for the eyes, but the, that is the optimal, or optimum meanings, optimal meanings of the functions which were the reason uh, to build this structure. Should I repeat probably? Uh, so, of course, you remember that the function is the first and the structure is the second. 
but the golden section gives us the key how to influence the structure to perfection and that's why to provide the back best functions i mean that functions which were the um, reason which were the cause to appear this structure uh, the best um, example illustrating this thought could be the egg which uh, Fabergé used for his uh, tremendous collection. Um, he has chosen the egg as the symbol of perfection, not only because of uh, its shape, which is really beautiful, really perfect, but because uh, of the function and what is the function is durability it is uh, almost impossible uh, to uh, um, to crush to destroy the egg squeezing evenly in the hands because of the embryo you have the example of the beauty and of the function you can see here muzzle circumference and skull circumference the ratio is three to five why what is the function bite the this provides the best bite of the dog the dog can bite the best if this ratio is provided. Moreover, when it is required to provide the maximum of bite, you can remember Bull Terrier or Russian Borzoi. Shape of the head is egg-shaped. So, my example of Fabergé egg was very good for this explanation. So this is a, an example we have already analyzed without any lines, but now uh, it is the task to your imagination and your knowledge. <laughs> I will not repeat any more about the details which provide this dog movement very sound. But I'll be, uh, I will use these principles when uh, analyzing the photos. Now it's a time uh, for the photos. Very briefly. Be Excellent build bitch. Slightly long bodied, with a perfect top line and correct uh, depth of the chest. Excellent front angulation, as well as the rear head for the beach is quite long but could be could look longer if the furnishing would be better developed long high set neck high enough set neck with a perfect top line correct tail set and overall well balanced pitch probably i will say very similar things about this example this coat is more developed on the body and uh, on the maybe on the legs uh, excellent outlines correct front angulations excellent rear angulations and in this case like in this case you can compare distance between the legs and length of the body you can measure it uh, here and here, maybe it is the same beach, I don't know. Uh, the beard could be developed better. But it is very typical for the dogs, which are 
living uh, at the countryside and uh, uh, I connected a lot with the earth. Somewhat long bodied, with the excellent depth of the body, with a big and massive head, uh, medium long neck, excellent sloping top line, uh, enough angulated in front at this picture. I have to um, uh, beware. I'm not judging the dogs. I'm judging the <coughs> moments when dogs were pictured. And the same dog could be pictured and could be put standing uh, on different way and the description will be different. So uh, don't uh, uh, think that my um, description are absolutely textual. I describe what I see. So I would uh, suggest a little bit better front angulation and a little bit more developed fore chest. In this case, strong, massive, deep chested, uh, medium long bodied dog, uh, very strong in uh, the construction overall. You can see the difference between female and male, very clear, large massive head, medium long neck. You remember my explanation, as longer is the head, as shorter is the neck, because the sum should remain the same meaning. Beautiful top line and tail set, excellent developed chest, including fore chest, excellent front angulation as well as the rear. I don't say anything about the coat because you have to touch the coat to understand the texture and all other important details. Beautiful, uh, moderately long body, solid body, beautiful top line, excellent developed chest, a long uh, massive head with a well proportioned uh, neck, uh, moderately set high with a beautiful top line and cor absolutely correct tail set, deep chest with the prominent fore chest, correct front angulation, excellent front angulation, uh, with the excellent uh, car carriage. Also beautiful uh, bitch. A moderately long bodies with the excellent outlines, either top line or underline and depth of the chest. Uh, quite large and massive head, medium long neck. Uh, I told about the top line, correct tail set and tail carriage. Uh, moderately developed for chest correct front angulation, excellent front, uh, rear angulation, uh, a little bit overloaded with the hair for chest. Uh, it could be uh, groomed more clear and uh, uh, repeat more uh, natural um, shape of the for chest uh, seen uh, from the side. Here is much better done than here. Uh, we have, uh, all of them we have beautiful dogs here. Also medium long bodied with the excellent outlines. Uh, sh large massive head, medium long neck, excellent top line with the developed with us, correct tail set and uh, saber shaped tail. Uh, enough uh, developed for chest enough front angulation at this picture at least. I don't see exactly because we see uh, not exactly in profile. Excellent developed hind legs, well-developed furnishing. 
gorgeous dog. Uh, beautiful, uh, ha very handsome in everything except one thing. This is a bit too much. One more time, overloaded with the hair for chest. Uh, solid body, uh, slightly long body, um, deep chested, strong in bones, massive overall, without coarseness, large massive head, medium long neck, perfect top line, tail set and tail carriage, um, moderately angulated in front, excellent angulated behind, excellent developed furnishing on the head and limbs. Strong, massive dog. Uh, I'm very sorry if I will be mistaken because sometimes I do not see the details um, to understand whether I have um, the male or female. The dogs could be overloaded with the hair and it could change the um, general appearance. Um, strong, moderately long-bodied dog with a solid body and deep chest, strong in bones. A head is a large, massive, medium long neck, excellent developed with a strong top line, correct tail set and tail carriage, enough developed for chest, enough angulated in front, excellent angulated in the rear. Uh, a little bit um, um, spoiled in vertical proportions because of the grass. Rather long-bodied, massive, I believe, male. Deep-chested, strong in bones. Large in head, long enough in the neck, excellent top line, tail set and tail carriage. Um, uh, Four chest is overloaded by the hair, so it's difficult to say what it is um, in the nature of this dog. Uh, correctly angulated in front, excellent angulated behind, a little bit overloaded with the hair. Let's go on. Uh, this is the bitch. Uh, feminine, moderately long-bodied with the excellent outlines, deep, uh, deep chested, uh, long enough head, but this is the bitch, long neck, beautiful top line, with the excellent developed with us, absolutely strong um, as, the, as the whole, solid top line. Uh, correctly tails, correct tail set and tail carriage, deep chest, prominent fore chest, correct front angulations. Um, rare angulations should be uh, correct, but um, hind leg from our side is a little bit too much placed behind the dog. Uh, the rear pastel should be vertical, a little bit too much. Uh, the coat is broken, which is very visible. Also, probably the bitch. Uh, slightly long bodied, with the excellent outlines, large head and long neck, correct uh, neck set. Uh, perfect top line, tail set and tail carriage. Deep chest, um, difficult to say what is uh, the nature, natural angulation in front of this dog because uh, front legs are placed a little bit forward the, uh, of the dog. So, uh, and um, uh, shoulder angulation is a bit straightened. I don't know what is uh, in reality. Uh, good uh, developed for chest, a correct front angulation. Here and here I have to notice very wide upper thigh. Excellent prominent erect tuber or buttocks. 
So let's go on. Uh, the same beach. So, be beautiful uh, beach, beautiful. Slightly long bodied. Body is solid. Beautiful top and underline. Excellent depth of the body. Large head with the parallel planes. Medium long neck. Strong top line, correct tail set. Uh, chest is uh, developed in front, well developed for chest. Absolutely correct angulations, either front or uh, rear. And the correct grooming, not too much coat without any exaggerations. Go on, please. So difficult to say anything about this dog because of the angle of picturing. Uh, three quarters instead of profile. What we can see, a uh, massive dog with the excellent top line, deep chested, strong in bones, uh, broad uh, bodied, large head, uh, high set neck, correct tail uh, set and tail carriage, uh, excellent developed coat, maybe a bit too uh, overloaded uh, with the coat. Um, long bodied, massive, strong, male with a large massive head, medium long neck, Excellent top line, prominent with us, absolutely perfect back, loin, and sacrum um, divisions. High set tail, saber shaped, excellent develop in the fore chest, good depth of the body. Um, Dog is looking a bit more stocky. Uh, to me, the coat on the on the underside of the chest is a bit too much, uh, and uh, the fore chest is also a bit overloaded by the coat. But uh, full of uh, coat over uh, all over the dog, excellent developed finishing and nice temperament, as you can see. Dog is full of spirit. I start from the right picture. This is the Chris. That Chris, who is uh, most famous uh, specimen of the breed in its history, either at the shows or in breeding. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Nothing else. Uh, medium long bodied with an excellent top line and deep chest. Couldn't say to you exactly about the head because of the angle of the picture, uh, as well about the neck. Beautiful top line, deep chest, enough prominent for chest, what we can see from this angle. Uh, the um, front. Um, could be better angulated at this picture. A excellent rare angulations. Broken coat. Uh, look at the dog on the move. This is the beach. I think this is the same beach which uh, I, I ask you to put um, in the beginning. Look at the movement. Top line remains firm. Excellent uh, chest of the body. Limbs inscribes in the right angle. Hind leg at the stage of support uh, is under the center of gravity. Vertical dropped from the eye, uh, 
is crossing uh, the paw of the foreleg, ready to be landed. Beautiful picture, beautiful movement. Here. Long-bodied, deep-chested, a bit too stocky dog because of the excess of the coat left uh, on the chest and belly. Um, in the comparison with the um, uh, substance, in the oral substance, head uh, looks a bit too short. Uh, medium long neck, excellent top line and tail set. Um, a bit too much hair on the fore chest, a bit too straight in front, excellent rear angulation. In my opinion, a dog could look differently with less coat, too much coat. Let us take a look at this picture. It is not profile, but something is visible. Firm top line, uh, hind leg under the body is at the base of the vertical, lowered from the uh, axis of the pendulum. Um, we cannot say about the uh, right angle because the dog should be more close to the ground, as I told you before. And uh, this is what can I see and describe at this picture. And this picture is also difficult to say something except the balance. Look at the strides, front stride and the rear stride. Their length is equal. Top line is firm, and uh, the uh, foreleg and eye belong to one vertical line. And these pictures are only um, to say about some details, not about um, the overall picture, because of the angle of the picturing. Uh, we can see the dog with a solid body, with the excellent depth of the body, with the excellent mm, extended trot and uh, the uh, criterion is provided. Eye and uh, paw of the front leg close to the moment of landing uh, belong to one vertical line. Uh, here is not the best picture, not the best moment. Um, we can say about the balance regarding equality of the strides front and the rear, they are. Um, a bit too arched um, in the uh, loin region and uh, looks with the neck uh, a bit too short not the best moment for the description. Look at this movement of this bitch. This is the same bitch. Look. She is beautiful either when standing or when moving. And in my opinion, she's a really a paragon of the breed. So, I would like you to uh, imprint in your mind this image and keep it in your mind when judging this breed. This is what I wanted to tell you about the Russian Black Terrier and uh, about the specifics of that breed confirmation, which uh, should be, in my opinion, considered when you are judging on, or when you are breeding. Because uh, of the priorities, 
I ask you to draw your attention. Um, I'm ready to answer your questions, if, should you have it. <laughs> uh, Claudio, thank you so much. I, uh, I appreciate it. I try to do my best, even with my limited English. Uh, so, see, see you next Tuesday, and we will have, uh, I think we can announce the grade. Yes. Uh, yes, for our colleagues, and we will have uh, a Ruskaya Psova Barzai, Russian Barzai. So, get ready, and uh, we will do the same. Ah, uh, Claudio Sprashovit, one last time, what do you think about the head and uh, the elbow? The elbow, sometimes there is a subject slow in mm -hmm. the lips. Uh, Yes, Claudio, um, as it was mentioned, the height at the elbows alna is 50 to 52 um, percent. In my opinion, the elbow joint is placed in the middle of the distance from the withers to the ground. Like for the majority of the breeds, uh, please take a look at the picture in front of you at the screen. This is two, this is one, and this is one. Two, one, one. One more time, initial Fibonacci numbers. And if it uh, violated, you feel it immediately. As, as Italian, you have the best taste for the beauty. <laughs> okay, so no more questions uh, so we can say goodbye and see you next tuesday or uh, if if you will have something more to ask you can ask next time yeah any questions more no 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 okay thank you very much to all of you for your attention and your uh, your interest in uh, the russian black terror in my opinion the russian black terror is a really pearl among other breeds and it could be considered as the uh, modern uh, 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 just a moment uh, modern image of the sinological russia like in the past it was Berzai. <laughs>